you probably don't remember what you were doing on November 9th, 2005, but in our family, it's a day we will never forget. 11-9 was like our family's 9-11. Our lives have never been the same since that fateful day. Our sweet son Bradley, social, polite, but sickly. He had constant ear, strep, Lyme infections, resulting in a mild learning disability, but a happy child until that day. He was just eight and a half years of age when he came home from school, psychotic, paranoid, delusional. Everything about him changed. His speaking voice, personality, the best description I can offer is he became possessed at 3.30 p.m. on 11.9.05. Go. Bradley, get off the floor. Come on. Let's go. Come on, buddy. We need to get off the ground. Brad. What? What are you Come doing? On. What's with the face, Bradley? Why are you doing this? Bradley. Come on, let's go. Here. Give me your hand. I'll help you up. I will help you up the ground, Brad. I'm doing it. You have to do it. No game of wolves. Don't get Don't get bro. I warned you, Scarecrow, but you don't behave at tears. Reverse the switches. And, uh, it might throw up. Maybe We immediately sought help. We went to dozens of doctors up and down the East Coast. Pediatricians, psychiatrists, psychologists, neurologists, immunologists. Together with our insurance, we spent tens of thousands of dollars on psychiatric meds, none of which worked, and hundreds of thousands of dollars on psychiatric hospital stays and emergency room visits. Taxpayers spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on his education, services through the state, and multiple 9-11 calls with police and emergency response. Even an inpatient study at the National Institutes of Mental Health didn't turn up any answers. As he got older, during severe episodes, he'd become stronger, violent, and dangerous. I was afraid of my own child. In moments of clarity, Bradley would cry out for help. Have a listen in his own words. This was a daunting 13 year, heart wrenching journey through our broken healthcare system, which no family should ever have to endure. In late 2006, I connected his symptoms with a condition called PANDAS, an acronym for Pediatric Autoimmune Neuropsychiatric Disorders Associated with Streptococcal Infections. The condition has since been expanded to PANS, Pediatric Acute Onset Neuropsychiatric Syndromes. But the key to both is that common infections like strep, walking pneumonia, viruses, Lyme, and other seemingly innocuous illnesses can trigger a misdirected autoimmune response resulting in inflammation on a child's brain. These are devastating syndromes that are likely as prevalent as pediatric cancer and diabetes, yet awareness and education is scarce. With pandas and pans, the child almost instantly exhibits life-changing symptoms, such as psychosis, OCD, anxiety, tics, personality changes, violent outbursts, decline in math and handwriting abilities, sensory sensitivities, anorexia, and more. What makes it more challenging is that these infections are often asymptomatic and go undetected. This misdirected autoimmune reaction can be stopped and symptoms are able to completely remit, but prompt diagnosis and treatment are absolutely critical. The problem was, most doctors didn't believe in pandas back then, or even if they did, few had any ideas on what to do. But we searched and searched for answers, and in 2007, we're fortunate to find a neurologist who administered intravenous immunoglobulin therapy, IVIG, a handful of times. While Bradley never fully recovered, IVIG gave us a few manageable years. He was somewhat stable, but never well again. We always walked on eggshells, waiting for something to set him off. 
Of course, we didn't know it then, but IVIG is only temporary, but only until another infection occurs. Left improperly treated, I believe, although it's not proven yet, that pandas and pans can lead to a much more serious condition called autoimmune encephalitis. Bradley was finally diagnosed and treated for AE in 2014, first at Georgetown under Dr. Beth Latimer, then later that year at the Duke Autoimmune Brain Disease Clinic in Durham, North Carolina. By then, he nearly died when his brain and body began to shut down. Bradley exhibited 100% of these symptoms and more. It was terrifying to witness. I can't even begin to imagine what it felt like to be him. As daunting as the search for medical treatment was, our educational journey was just as difficult. Bradley had 14 placements in 13 years. Most schools would not or could not accommodate his complex, constantly changing needs. I can't begin to tell you how much your heart aches to hear over and over again, he's not a fit. After several wrongful terminations, I went so far as to file emergent relief and due process to keep him settled while his brain began to recover. Even the judge sadly stated, the school just doesn't want him, and ruled in their favor. In 2017, I filed a complaint with the U.S. Department of Justice, citing a violation against the Americans with Disabilities Act. I don't know the outcome, but it gave me some comfort in knowing the Department of Justice did investigate. Miraculously, after two years of therapy, he made enormous strides. This is crazy, but the medicine that turned him around is a biological drug called rituximab. It's used with chemotherapy for cancer patients and for rheumatoid arthritis. It works by essentially shutting down overactive immune cells. Who would think that a cancer drug could also make psychosis, violent rages, anorexia, catatonia, and bizarre tics all disappear? Bradley is the hardest working kid I've ever met in my life. We get here, what do you want to do today, Bradley? Can we do math? Sure, we can do math. Can we do work today? What kind of work do you want to do? <coughs> math? All right, so we're going to do math. I've seen Bradley sit down for three hours and finish a worksheet with 100 math problems. <coughs> and I said, do you want to take a break? No. And he just sat there and worked. There's no quit in him. He'll do anything you ask him. He does the uh, landscaping outside. We dug we, uh, put the dirt in the planters out there. He planted all the flowers out back. Um, and he didn't want to stop till we were done. Even though we heard the last bell on the bus was gonna leave, he wanted to finish planting the flowers. I'm like, Bradley, we can finish tomorrow. And he's like, but I want to finish now. Throughout the 2015 to 2016 school year, Bradley absolutely loved going back to school. The smile on his face warmed each and everyone's heart. He recovered from anorexia, gaining nearly 100 pounds, and his sweet, polite, gentle personality fully returned. He received accolades from every teacher and staff member. He made their honor roll every marking period. But eventually, they turned on him too. 2016 was the best year of our lives. We truly believed Bradley was in remission. We thanked God every minute of every day for the miracle he performed. But it was not meant to be permanent. Not yet, anyway. In November 2016, he acquired yet another infection. A boil on his neck so large it needed an emergency IND, incision and drainage. It was likely full of either Strep A bacteria or MRSA. Unfortunately, the urgent care facility didn't have it tested. Within weeks, Bradley fell into a horrific relapse. His brain caught fire again. He was no longer cognitively aware of anything. He was no longer able to converse. He spent his days babbling nonsensical word salad. Worst of all, he was back to being violent and dangerous again all a direct result of the inflammation inside his brain. He lost 50 pounds, and worse, he lost hope and faith in people he once trusted the most. 
In June of 2017, we made the painful decision to place him in a group home, a crisis stabilization center. Their clinical staff felt equally as frustrated they couldn't stabilize him with the behavioral interventions they specialized in because they knew his problems are medical, not behavioral. He lost all the skills he learned and presented like a 90-year-old man with dementia, except he had a very strong 20-year-old body. A year into this relapse, we were so desperate for help. We saw a renowned autoimmune encephalitis neurologist. We waited months to get an appointment with him. But instead of having him admitted for a full neurological workup, he had security escort us out of his clinic after he witnessed Bradley's damaged brain cause him to fall into a rage and attack. There were no hospitals or doctors willing to treat him aside from our wonderful immunologist, Dr. Harumi Jayanucci at St. Peter's Hospital in New Brunswick, New Jersey. But she's only one person. This disease is so complex, it truly needs a multidisciplinary approach. Once again, Bradley could no longer function. He couldn't speak in conversations, only random nonsensical words muddled together. But what was worse, he could understand what was happening inside his brain, which made him angry and caused him to violently lash out in anger and desperation. He'd go from being somewhat calm one moment, then lunge, bite, and attack the next. In December of 2017, we returned to Duke's Autoimmune Brain Disease Clinic. His doctors were devastated to see his condition deteriorated. They suggested one more treatment, a fourth line therapy, another biological medicine called tocilizumab. It was just about our last and final hope. We also started an integrative approach, membrane stabilization therapy, a protocol designed to rebuild his badly damaged immune system versus suppressing it. On January 2nd of 2018, he was terminated again from his 14th school placement in 13 years. On March 4th, he turned 21 and transferred from the New Jersey Children's System of Care to the adult system and was required to be discharged from that group home. All these transitions on top of the medical treatments were overwhelming for Bradley and our entire family, but we never gave up hope. We continued with tocilizumab IV therapy every four weeks starting December 29th, 2017. TOSI is an IL-6 inhibitor, which slows down the proliferation of these pro-inflammatory cytokines. Bradley responded textbook perfectly to treatment. Again, it was tenuous at first. He'd have fleeting moments or at best a few days of mental clarity, only for it to all disappear instantly right in front of our eyes. But... After six months, he sustained his drastic improvements and got up to 90% of baseline. Unfortunately, he continues to cycle through these ups and downs. We know this condition is chronic and never take each day for granted. We thank God for it every minute. This prayer, right, sweetie? Yeah. We sing it in church. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. After the best summer in over two years, something very instantly and drastically changed again in the fall of 2018. His symptoms began first as sudden mood changes, and he tried his best to fight and hold on, but aggression, psychosis, urinary incontinence, insomnia, eating disorders, OCD, and countless other symptoms presented themselves in force. Tosi brought him back to about 50% within 24 hours of an infusion on October 5th, but that day, his episodes were so severe, he was banned 
permanently from St. Peter's Hospital. After a Tosi infusion, he's calm and doesn't remember much other than remorse. He hates this disease as much as we do. We returned to the Duke Autoimmune Brain Disease Clinic in December of 2018, but they are strictly pediatric. They discharge all their patients before their 22nd birthday. Their final recommendation to us was to double the frequency of tocilizumab to every two weeks, which we implemented in January of 2019. I'm so happy to report that he is responding again textbook perfectly. His gains, however, are clearly cyclical in that he will relapse suddenly and drastically on or about day 12, then bounce dramatically back up almost immediately after an infusion. My wish is for a multidisciplinary clinic to open right here in New York City. I hope you will join me. When I find myself in times of trouble, Mother Mary comes to me Speaking words of wisdom Let it be And in my hour of darkness She is standing right in front of me Speaking words of wisdom Let it be 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 Whisper words of wisdom, let it be.